What's going on, traders? Welcome to the SPACs attack. Let's get it started. Boom. What's going on, traders? How we doing? I see y'all coming on in. Welcome, welcome to the show. And definitely, definitely give me a thumbs up. Let's go ahead and bring in my brains to this show, Chris Ketchy. Hey, what's going on, Mitch? How we doing? What's going on? Ready for another show? We got a good interview going to get into. Another, another SPAC from a Hall of Famer, Nicolo Demasi. We'll definitely be getting into that a little bit later, DMYQ. And for now, we we'll definitely touch some of the headlines. But how was the weekend? It was good. You know, an exciting day of uh, sports yesterday. Uh, of course, the Euro 2020 final with Italy winning. I mean, in a penalty shootout, this tournament was so dramatic with so many late games going extra time into shootout. So a uh, great way to end. All right. All right. Looks like uh, we'll, we'll be having some other people joining in now. Looks like. At least it's showing me that David Green's still live, so we'll get him to go ahead and finish on up there, and then we'll have some others joining us in here. But definitely, well, I mean, you you called that you called that little win there in in, in Italy, so not not a bad pick there from the beginning of the uh, of kind of you even did it in the group stage. I mean, you did it for four and the group stage, so not a bad one there, Chris. I, I was able to make a little bit of cash on the weekend with a little gambling money. I'm sure you did the same. Yeah, you Did know, the they, they they looked good entering the Euro. They were on a huge unbeaten streak, and through that group stage, you know, they looked dominant, and then, you know, they just kind of the rest of the way just kept their winning ways. So, I mean, they haven't lost a match in, like, over 35 games now, which is insane when you think about it. But, you know, yeah, I was able to make some off of that and excited also to watch the Home Run Derby tonight with Otani, hopefully uh, getting the crown tonight in Colorado. What do you think? Yeah, man, I, 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 I'm, I'm, you, you're pushing my levels here, Chris. I'll tell you why. Because uh, so yesterday, you know me, I love my promos. So I said, "What? Let's start using. Let's get some promo money. Let's 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 get a little risky here." So I said, "What? All right, I'll go after a one to one hundred and fifty uh, promo from DraftKings. Still hadn't used my DraftKings promo, so I went after DraftKings for the NBA." promo it, they had him a good mcgregor one but you had to pick the fighter i didn't know which one to fight for so i had a feeling the bucks would win and so i went after the bucks got a nice 150 dollars gainer after one dollar putting in there and so i'm going to take that 150 i'm going to take the, the the 50 that i made on italy for the next goal combine that and maybe throw in a little bit of extra put it all on otani today and we're going to see what happens because maybe, just maybe, you might see me at the All-Star game tomorrow. You know, Mitch, I saw some footage. Otani was in a home run derby in Japan back in 20, 2016. It. And, oh, man, did he look comfortable uh, winning that tournament. Obviously, you know, there's some different competition over here. But, you, you know, I just got to believe that he uh, he wins tonight. So, but anyways, uh, uh, you know, moving beyond sports, we do have some exciting SPAC headlines out there and also one huge deal to talk about today. Before our interview with our good friend, Niccolo Damasi, to talk DMYQ. What do you think, Mitch? Yeah, man, we're going to definitely get into some headlines. Looks like we got some new people joining in. If you're watching David Green, welcome, welcome. We got a major interview today. We're going to get into DMYQ. But first things first, Chris, do us a favor, man, like you always do. Take us behind those headlines. All right. Yeah. Up first, of course, the big story of the weekend, Virgin Galactic, SPCE. I, I am still long shares. You know, the, the event of the weekend, right? Successful flight with Sir Richard Branson, Elon Musk making an appearance there, uh, Khalid making an appearance, singing, you know, a, a new single. Over six million people watched the YouTube video of the coverage. 
You know, this was their their big event. And, and then also announcing uh, that you can win a seat on a future flight. So seats currently cost $200,000 to $250,000. But Branson and Virgin Galactic partnering with Omaze, um, which raises money for charities, where you can actually earn a seat on a 20 22 flight for as little as five dollars so you can buy 50 entries for five dollars 100 for 10 all the way up to 2,000 entries for a hundred most entries a single person can purchase is six thousand and the winning ticket cannot be sold or transferred but you're actually going to get two seats one for you and one for whoever you want to bring to space with you you know so that's a big deal right this is a good way again for virgin galactic to kind of show off um, you know, the, the technology they have, people ready to get to space, um, you know, instead of paying that 200 to 250,000. Um, so the big news, you know, after today was a, a share offering and I'm seeing mixed comments out there. Uh, you know, I saw a report on Twitter that actually this shelf filing uh, happened back in May. Analysts have even commented on this recently. Um, you know, talking about them raising cash. So this shouldn't have been a big surprise, but we saw shares sell sell off today, um, you know, but I think there's more to the story, right? The upcoming catalyst, which I've been spot on the story of Virgin Galactic this year, um, you know, calling out the stories, calling out the catalyst that will move shares. So the catalyst moving forward, we have uh, opening back up the reservations, right? So over 600 people right now, when will we get an update on that? We also have the potential of a new price point, that 200 to 250,000. While it sounds like a lot, analysts actually think that they can charge more. And then we have Blue Origin uh, doing their flight with Jeff Bezos and also announcing a, a new pricing for their flights, which could put Virgin Galactic you know, either cheaper or in comparison. We're also gonna see some analyst updates. So we saw one bearish one this morning, and then also we'll have more test flights. So. I see so much hate out there for SPCE, right? So the same people that were telling you to sell the news at $25 a share of, are, of course, telling you to sell shares today on the news. I, I still have my long position. I'm not surprised we're seeing the sell-off from the share offering. Also not surprised to see the share offering, but I think shares go back up from those catalysts. So, uh, you know, keep an eye out on the story, as always, with Virgin Galactic. And we did have a, a SPAC merger call-off talk. So ACEV and Acronix call off their merger talks. This was a semiconductor deal. Um, we had Acronix on the show um, not too long ago. Haven't heard a lot of details on why this deal didn't get done, but keep an eye out. ACEV will now look for a new target. They do have you know, a, a long time to, to do that, um, but shares now trading at 986. Then uh, analyst notes today. So we have JP Morgan downgrading Clover Health, that's CLOV, to underweight, announcing a $9 price target. ASTS, that's AST Space Mobile Shares, uh, getting an overweight rating and a $29 price target from Barclays. UWM Holdings, that's UWMC, initiated by Morgan Stanley with equal weight and a price target of $8. One of our big movers out there, INDI, Indy Semiconductor, I, I do own shares of. Craig Hallam initiating coverage with a buy rating, announcing a price target of $18. Uh, again, semiconductor play here, connected automobiles. Um, this has been one of my favorites in that semiconductor space. So keep an eye out, INDI. Then Tattooed Chef, TTCF, uh, announcing plans to launch in Kroger stores nationwide later this summer. That shouldn't be a huge surprise. We actually called that out a couple of weeks ago on this show when I said that there was chatter out there. People were finding Tattooed Chef products on Kroger's website, um, and it, hopefully that Kroger would launch nationwide. So that news getting confirmed today. Um, Kroger, obviously one of the largest grocery stores in the company or in the country. That's huge for Tattooed Chef at this point, and one of the key points for the year. Then FPAC was up 2% on that deal with Bullish on Friday. And then we do have some upcoming votes this week. Uh, ASPL and RSVA both voting to today. 
LCY and AONE tomorrow and GXGX, SBG and EMPW on the 14th. And then we turn to our deal. So one of the largest SPAC deals in history, MSP Recovery announced a SPAC merger with Lionheart Acquisition Corp 2. That's ticker LCAP, valuing the company at $32.6 billion. No pipe on this deal, um, which was a surprise. Also, public LCAP shareholders are going to own only 0.7% of the company after the merger. The, the interesting thing here is that shareholders of LCAP that do not redeem their shares at the merger vote are going to get at least 35 additional warrants with a five-year uh, $11.50 strike price. So an incentive to stay long these shares through the merger. So that's pretty interesting play here. MSP Recovery is a, a leader in data-driven solutions for the Medicare and Med Medicaid sector. So they own over $50 billion in build amounts against insurance companies. So they try to find where improper payments are made and, and go after those companies. They use um, you know, data analytics and algorithms that they've created. Uh, this is an interesting company. I didn't know a lot about this before. Huge market size um, for Medicare and Medicaid. No revenue right now. Uh, estimated revenue of 992 million in 2022, and 3.11 billion in fiscal 2023. And projections all the way out. Fiscal 2026, 23.77 billion dollars. Um, shares up about one percent to 997. Again, yeah, uh, crew cut, Chuck. Yeah, 0.7 percent will be what shareholders own. Remember, they are getting incentivized with those warrants, though. So interesting deal. That's what I've got, Mitch. What do you think? Uh, you know, Virgin Galactic, obviously the big story. And then this this new deal announced today. I mean, it's $32.6 billion, but a rather unique structure here. Yeah, definitely. It's something to always keep on watch when we get these big, big deals. And and one of the things is, you know, we've haven't had a big deal in a little while. So definitely keep it on watch. You never know what could happen there. Uh, but man, w what a what a day, right? I mean, SPCE up, down, even though it was still one of those things I said, you know, what's that pre-market action? Because a lot of times we've been getting that pattern is in SPCE where it goes up in pre-market then kind of gives it up at at the open there. And so that's kind of what I think, you know, I mean, if you don't, if you didn't look at the patterns before and you didn't see those pre and post and, and aftermarket hours, you probably didn't even know that a pattern existed in SPCE. Um, I saw a couple of traders get caught in it today. Um, it's almost like they didn't, they just didn't look at the charts. You know what I mean? Or right, they did, they were looking at the daily charts and not looking at the intraday charts that give you the access to that information. So you can see those patterns. That's why I gave it beforehand. You know, we talked about it on Friday. It wasn't necessarily that we didn't think SPC couldn't go up. I mean, it did go up in pre-market. It's just more along a pre-market spike that happens a lot of the times, comes down to a big support and then picks up off those supports. So you have to know how to trade these. And one of the biggest things that I would recommend is this is not a one minute chart type of stock. Uh, just to put that out there, you know, a lot of times I, I say you can trade off the one minute. This is a very good example of a stock that if you do trade off of the one minute, a lot of times what's going to happen, you're going to get caught into the momentum moves and then you, you get caught in the middle because you're not looking at the bigger time frames and the bigger supports and resistance that exist within the stock. Yeah, I think the big thing is a lot of people got into Virgin Galactic, you know, Mitch, on Thursday or Friday, hoping to just make a quick play on it. And, mm -hmm. and this really hasn't been one of those quick play stocks, right? It's been play the story, right? So as I said, I've called out the stories this year, you know, of when they're going to announce their space flights, how I thought that, you know, Branson was going to, they were going to be competitive, right? And try to beat Bezos to space. We both said that, right? As soon as they got that clearance, they were going to beat Bezos to space and they did and, and shares ran up. And then on Friday, shares actually ended down and, and the company had probably best possible outcome on Sunday, right? The, the only flaws really were, were the feed, right? The video, you know, quality wasn't as clear as it could have been, but again, you know, they're, they're up in space and, and you know, and, and then we get the share offering today. You know, I'm a little disappointed 
that that news came out today, right? I, I think we could have waited to really see that. But as I dive in more, it looks like, again, they actually filed that, uh, you know, over a month ago, um, you know, and the news coming out today. But, you know, this is a company that needs money, right? Those planes aren't cheap. They, they need money to make more planes. They, I think they need to open up reservations to get more revenue, you know, from actual customers, uh, you know, along with that share offering. But this is one where I think we're going to see a couple days sell off now. But, you know, I, I think we're going to see shares go higher into the Bezos Blue Origin flight, you know, because, again, this is a pair trade. So follow the story with the pair. Yeah, this stock gave you multiple opportunities to play the range, bouncing off daily supports, going up about even close to like $10, 10 points on these moves. So this is what I was talking about, that I was seeing this pattern beforehand. And then this is an easy pattern once you see it on the daily to look for it on the intraday. Where is it happening? Is it happening at a 12, 12 o'clock noon breakout? Is it a, a 9.30 breakout right at the open? No. You would have saw, guess what? I would have gone into at least an hourly chart. And you can clearly see a lot of the times when are these spikes happening into after hours or pre-market hours. So that can give you the sign that, hey, I might need to play this a swing into the close off support. That's kind of how I would have approached this stock if I would have been wanting to get in this one. Just want to point that out because I know a lot of people were confused on how do you trade a stock like this. A lot of that has to do with looking at the patterns and finding out what's going on here. What's the consistent move that you're seeing? And it's a lot of it was pre-market and after hours movement. Yeah, lots of option buying last week too. So we're going to have a lot of options expiring this Friday, Mitch. So I think this one's going to have some, some you know, huge trading this week because again, a lot of people could be caught in those options, you know, that they bought into Friday thinking that these shares were just going to rocket today, um, you know, before we got that share offering news. So uh, keep an eye out on that. Guys, please smash the like. We, we got Jason in the chat saying that we need to get some more likes. We also have an exciting guest coming on. You guys yes, asked yes. for us to bring him back on. Let's show him some love. Mitch, you know, I, I, are we ready to get into our, our middle segment here and unlock some SPACs? Yes, yes. Can I bring on the genie? Oh, no. Hold on. The, the, uh, not the genie. Let's bring on my man. You already know, guys, where we unlock the SPACs. Uh, this 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 is a Hall of Famer now, at least in my eyes, and I'm sure Chris's eyes. So let's go ahead. Let's get right into it, Chris. Go ahead and bring him on. All right, guys. Yeah, we're super excited to have back on the show uh, a friend of Spax Attack, Niccolo Damasi, the CEO of DMY Technology Group, who took Rush Street Interactive, Genius Sports Public has IonQ merging with DMYI and recently announced the merger of Planet with DMYQ, which is what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back to Spax Attack, Niccolo. Hey, great to be here, guys. I, I noticed we've all got our summer haircuts, so that's... Uh... <laughs> That's important, you know, for oh, July. It's a must, it's a <laughs> must. I've been saying it, you know, the demand, demand to get out, the demand to look good. I, I think it's going on. And I mean, hey, making a purchase, that doesn't seem too bad either. So we'll go ahead and let Chris get into some of these questions for DMYQ. I'm sure I could go on for days and days about RSI and Genie, but I won't do that to you today. But definitely, guys, let's go ahead and learn a little bit about DMYQ. All right. So welcome back to the show, Niccolo. So, you know, last week we got the merger announcement for DMYQ with Planet. This is a satellite company. Tell us, you know, what, what's the thesis here? Why was Planet the, the company that you chose uh, to bring public with the SPAC? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, I've actually been following Planet's progress since our first SPAC. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting Will Marshall, you know, a couple of years ago, um, and I actually fell in love with the business then. Uh, shortly after I saw Virgin Galactic, uh, you know, go out with uh, with Chamath, I sort of said, "Hey, what's better than a space business that hasn't doesn't have revenue for a few years? A space business that has lots of revenue already last year." Um, and so, you know, this is one of the distinguishing characteristics of of Planet at a high level is this is a nine figure revenue space business, right? Um, and it's a space business, you know, thematically, but it's also an ESG business and a data business. And these three trends, I'd say, are some of the most powerful ones in investing. Um, if you think about stocks that have done well 
on a 10, 20 year, 30 year basis. It's businesses that ultimately rhyme with proprietary data, rhyme with big secular trends like being able to measure you know, effectively your ESG progress. I mean, BlackRock has said you're not really an investable company if you're not if you don't track your ESG scores. Planet helps companies do that. But most of all, whilst this is a space business from a hardware side, that was 10 years ago for Planet. So in the past five years, this company has very much evolved to become a data business. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, it looks a lot more like Genius Sports, our second SPAC, than anything else. Uh, Planet is a subscription business. It's a diversified global business. It sells its data to multiple customers. It's not a one-to-one -one professional services Zooming business um, like you've seen in self other areas uh, of the satellite data space. And because of the software lead we have, we've hired people like Kevin Wheel from Instagram, you know, Twitter, and Google fame. He used to run product for them. We've got this tremendous lead, uh, you know, gentlemen. I've never actually seen a business with so many years of advantage over other players. You know, I'm used to like a one-year lead, a two-year coding advantage in enterprise software, but Planet already has 200 satellites up. It already has over $100 million of, of revenue. Um, and so there's this, there's this platform infrastructure data company that really is becoming the Bloomberg terminal, if you will, for whole earth data. We're the only company that can scan the whole earth every day. We're the only company that's been doing this for the better part of a decade, so we can go back through time. And we're allowing not only governments to track what's going on in their country, but we're the only company in the world that allows you to find those new you know, Chinese missile silos or find the Chinese fleet, if you will, when, you, you know, when, when you've lost it, because everybody else can only Zoom, believe it or not, right? So we're a global earth, effectively Google for the whole earth, if you will, how do you search the whole planet? And this is a business which transitioned to software and services, I'd say in the last two or three years. And so the story going forwards is really all about data and software. Awesome. So, you know, there's a slide in the presentation talks about two multi-trillion dollar global economic shifts. So we hear a lot of times, you know, total addressable markets, you know, that get into the trillion dollars. And here we have digital transformation worth a hundred trillion dollars and sustainability transformation worth $53 trillion. Those are some pretty massive numbers. Can you just break down, you know, how Planet plays into those two sectors and how it really sets the company up for growth ahead here. Yeah. Well, I actually like to break this down by by uh, by moving the sort of slide deck forward to the page that has the vertical industries in it. So let me give you an example of how, how we actually break this down. So let's take countries. <laughs> right now, there are individual countries in the emerging markets that pay us, you know, five to $10 million a year. Um, believe it or not, these are not wealthy countries. These are countries, as I said, they're still developing, but they need to understand and want to understand what's going on for their entire country on a daily basis. Are there natural disasters? Are there big mo movements of people? You know, what's going on? And we're only, you know, we're only sort of scratching the tip of the iceberg, if you will, on countries paying us five, $10 million a year in the emerging markets. We've got like two or three of those paying planet right now. There's another 150 of them to be had. So that's a billion dollar revenue segment right there that every country can afford, okay? Then you move on to things like logistics, right? You can effectively, you know, you need to track critical infrastructure, track, you know, where your shipments are going. Only company in the world allows you to do that, right? If you don't know where something is, a, you know, an ocean tanker, we're the only company that lets you find it effectively. We're also the only company that has so many satellites that we're able to actually revisit a location a dozen times a day if we want. And we can even capture a video on a site because we can retask satellites quickly and get you know 10 of these things on the same location. What's really exciting about Planet when I look at all these verticals here is we're only a nine figure revenue company right now, but every one of the verticals enables us to become a 10 figure billion dollar business in just one vertical. And we're addressing, you know, literally I'd say, you know, a dozen solid verticals. Agritech, right? Agricultural companies, already meaningful customer. 
they're only going to get bigger because we provide a tremendous competitive advantage that they cannot live without. Right? If you're if you're in, if you're a big agri company and you want to optimize effectively how you are treating crops, whether you're giving them too much water, not enough water, you need to know what's going on. We are able to do that across huge chunks of territory, and we're adding more spectral bands as well. So one of the things that's so impressive about what Will Marshall, the CEO and founder of Planet, has done is in the last you know, 10 years, he has pioneered what's called agile aerospace. So you showed that shoebox-sized satellite uh, a couple of minutes ago. Believe it or not, to get a satellite launched, built and launched, Planet builds them in-house in San Francisco, right, right below where the CEO sits, right above the sales team. It's all vertically integrated. And so we have this amazing... I like to say iPhone-like business, right? Steve Jobs said, any company who's serious about software builds their own hardware. That is Planet. Just like, you know, Elon Musk effectively is turning Tesla into a software company, right? Same thing. If you're serious about software in the long run, you got to build your own hardware. I'd say Planet is the only other company I know that has as big a TAM as Apple, as big a TAM as Tesla, and they're building their own hardware, they're building their own software, and they have the data advantage you need to drive machine learning advantages. This is one of the things people don't always realize about you know, Elon's strategy with Tesla is if you are the first to market and you have the coverage and you have the data, you have a machine learning advantage, right? For them, they can train autonomous driving. For Planet, we have a 10-year data advantage. We've been scanning the whole earth. We collect 25 terabytes of data per day. Imagine the tremendous AI and ML advantage this company has when it comes to becoming the world's best extraterrestrial data company, right? It's just really, really powerful. And because we build our satellites in-house, we can build them and launch them for literally low seven-figure millions. Compare this to other satellite companies that are focused on zooming. They can spend, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on a single satellite, believe it or not, right? So Planet has only spent $400 million or so all the way from inception to IPO. And that's to create a super $100 million revenue business and a 200 satellite fleet. It's really, really impressive, gentlemen. And one of the things you've seen us focus on the first three SPACs is return on invested capital. So you remember that for Genius, you remember that for RSI, you remember that for INQ. All three of these companies have gone to IPO on record low amounts relative to competitors. Planet's exactly the same way. One of the most telling things I've always said about a company having a better mousetrap is if they have higher return on invested capital and if they can get further and farther than anybody else on less money, it means they have a secret sauce. So this is to quote you guys, Planet is the ultimate thing behind the thing company, gentlemen. Awesome. I, I hope Jason, our CEO, is still in the chat and just heard you use, you know, the phrase that he likes to use so often, the thing behind the thing. Uh, Niccolo, I, I, you know, one of the things that struck me after this deal was announced was uh, actor uh, Edward Norton actually had a nice tweet out congratulating Will and the Planet team. And he said, that this company defines what ESG business should be truly doing well by doing good. Um, you mentioned it a little bit, but can you get into some of the ESG specifics here and how Planet you know, really fits into that ESG mold that some investors might be looking for you know, to diversify in that new growing segment? Oh yeah, look, I mean, if, if, if you're interested in space, if you're interested in ESG, you, you pretty much have to buy this business, right? The way I look at it is we are the most critical piece of infrastructure for monitoring, measuring climate change around the world, right? And if you, and as Will Marshall always says, if you can't monitor or measure it, how are you gonna ever improve it, right? So whether or not it is the fires that are going on, unfortunately in California right now, you know, the tremendous heat dome that's going, you know, that was going on last week in the Pacific Northwest, or how, you know, countries, are making progress on emissions tracking, as well as on you know, overall global temperature gradients, deforestation, forestry management. Um, you know, these are all items that you have to work with Planet on because only Planet can track these amazing swaths of territory, whole states, whole forests, whole continents, and the whole earth. In fact, um, if you're interested in, in hearing you know, more about that directly, tune in to Mark Benioff and Will Marshall chatting uh, tomorrow, actually, they have a panel on this. 
um, as you can probably see through the, the planet, uh, you know, social media feeds and, and Twitter. There is really just a lot of buzz around this company. Um, you know, Google's an investor in the pipe. Mark Benioff's an investor in the pipe. I think this is his biggest personal investment uh, other than Time Magazine. Um, and uh, you've also, of course, got, you know, people like BlackRock, um, you know, leading the pipe. And these are all people that, you know, care near and dear to their hearts as really progress on climate change and pro progress really on the E in ESG. This is about the environmental piece. This is not about the social and the governments as much, although that is relevant there. This is about the fundamental purpose of ESG, the, the capital E in this is, which is really about what are we doing to make sure that humans are living here sustainably and making sure that everybody, frankly, is making progress towards all of the climate change goals that governments and companies have pledged. We are the only way to measure that. We're the only way to honestly make sure that everyone's doing their bit to ensure that our children, our grandchildren are going to have as good, if not a better experience on this planet uh, than we do. Yeah, I love the ESG, you know, fit here from the company. Um, we, we've heard a lot about a, a SaaS model before. And one of the things that you said about completing this deal was a scalable data as a service subscription model. Can you yep. just explain a little bit how this works for Planet um, and with their customers, this data as a service uh, business model? No, great question. So let me, let me give you a bit of history of the industry. Um, there are other people, you know, that claim to do, uh, you know, satellite data. They are, you know, generally m many years behind us. Okay, so most of the people that claim to do satellite data really don't even have a fleet, or if they have a fleet, it's like three to five satellites, not ten, let alone two hundred. They're also typically zero revenue companies. There's only one uh, alternative to this, what I just said, which is, the, is there is one business out there that's been going a long time that makes most of its revenue from manufacturing satellites for the government. And then they also have a, what I call professional services zooming business. Now, why do I mention the committed landscape? Because I view this space as a pyramid. At the bottom, you have manufacturing satellite hardware. Then you have professional services. Can a government or a customer task a satellite to zoom on a specific point or address or house? That's where the whole industry is other than planet. Planet has moved on five to seven years ahead of that. So we've built out a fleet of 200 satellites. That gives you whole earth scan. It gives you video. It gives multiple revisit opportunities on the same location almost every hour or two if you want. Above building out the whole earth fleet, you have what I say, you know, what I call building that one to many SaaS business model and becoming the Bloomberg terminal, if you will, for whole earth data. And then you have machine learning on top of that and becoming a full software and data business. That's where Planet's business is today. We're becoming a software and data business. We built the fleet. We have the one to many. We're now focused on machine learning and building software solutions out. The one to many is truly unique. And it really makes us look exactly the same as a Bloomberg business, with the one exception being that we have proprietary data, right? Bloomberg aggregates data and charges subscriptions for that, and people can't live without it. Planet charges subscriptions, but for data that only we have. Nobody else can do what we can on a daily basis. And so that means that we're always going to be a price giver. You guys remember that like we like to talk about all weather companies at DNY, RSI, world's you know, world biggest casino business in the US, B2C, Genius, a business that's in the risk factors of DraftKings and FanDuel. It's so vital to them, right? INQ, world's first quantum computing company, cutting edge engineering business. Planet is like the best of SPAC 2 and SPAC 3 for DMY combined. We're a cutting edge engineering organization, but we've built on top of it the software business that allows us to resell the same proprietary data to as many customers as want it. We can sell the whole or scan, we can sell that country, we can sell that forest, we can sell that Zoom to dozens, hundreds, thousands of customers. And we're bringing the price down of it to make it accessible. This is really important. So, you know, traditionally government zooming and tasking of satellites have been like, you know, my joke is like, if there's that compound in a bada bod you want to look at, we, you know, people can, other people can do that. But what Planet's doing is we brought the price down of access so you can get access to our data for like five figures. These are not eight figure contracts. Planet has customers with five figure contracts that usually get started at, you know, five, six figures and they ladder up to seven and eight figures as they take more and more and more from us. But these are literally amounts that almost individual investors can use to get an advantage, right? Investing. Commodities traders, 
you guys all need access to planet data, right? You know, you get a massive advantage with planet data on what's going on on every commodity on the planet, right? Small businesses, same thing. Track where your logistic supply chain is going. Track your ESG goals. Track what's going on in the broader neighborhood, right? So ultimately, we see Planet as a software business that everybody subscribes for, just like a Bloomberg terminal that I think, you know, these days you can subscribe through your computer for like thousand bucks a month, something like that gets you Bloomberg access. It used to be only big banks that spent millions of dollars. Now it's literally accessible to all, you know, serious investors. Same thing's happening to Planet. We're going from eight figure only deals to seven figure, six figure, five figure deals, and ultimately a consumer business is where this company is going to grow to when it becomes, you know, a multi-billion dollar revenue business over the coming, you know, half a decade to a decade. Yeah, awesome. You know, I, I could go on, you know, for hours about this company, uh, you know, exciting. Uh, the one thing I want to highlight before I turn over to Mitch for some questions is there's a slide in the presentation, um, slide 35, that shows the ever given, you know, stuck in the canal. We, we all kind of remember that story. Um, you know, there's that picture. So, you know, break down to us, you know, how Planet you know, and the, the technology, the data can help companies when a situation like this arises, you know, that maybe some investors are familiar with this particular instance case here. Oh, yeah. Listen, we're the ultimate thing behind the thing, gentlemen, like all of the news that shows you pictures like this of new Chinese, you know, nuclear launch sites or forestry fires or this, it's from Planet. We're not always credited because, you know, often you know, the information is coming through people that have paid us for our data and so on. But we really are the ultimate global thing behind a thing. And so, you know, we could we could task, you know, satellites to stay on this site, record video. We could we could we could look at what's going on, record video every hour during the day. It's really a phenomenally useful tool for not just governments, but, you know, the 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 shipping company whose boat it is, the rescue workers, everybody else who wants to know when the you know the canal the Suez Canal is going to clear, right? Just think about the amazing number of uh, you know businesses that rely on understanding what's happening here to get an edge in real time on when that tanker was going to start unblocking things, right? It's really quite impressive about the sort of overlapping circles on that Venn diagram you were showing a couple of minutes ago about all the industries that care about this data. And you can see the great resolution that we have even on the whole earth scan. So we get this kind of resolution on the whole earth. And then we can also task out satellites to zoom all the way down to 35 centimeters, right? 35 centimeters is like, is a foot, less than a foot, right? So you can see license plates all the way out to this kind of imagery on the entire earth. And it really is just going to become, I think, a given long term. I think planet will become a standard, not just for governments, countries, Fortune 100 businesses, but all the way down to the Russell 3000, and ultimately, like I said, down to individual, professional, serious, you know, day traders. You're, you're gonna want to know what's going on with those, you know, commodity markets. When's that thing gonna get unblocked? When will when will good start shipping? What's gonna happen to the oil price? We are the only thing behind a thing that everybody can access. So stay tuned to Planet.com. We're bringing more solutions to more people in a more accessible way. Frankly, you know, every quarter uh, in the coming years. All right, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. Now, one thing I will say before I start, Nicolo, I was I was looking at these companies before you brought Planet. So I've been a big Maxar and Black Sky fan just because I'm, I'm big on imagery overall. I think right, it, I always said, um, if you're looking at space right now, I've always said, look at satellites. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, there's enough, there's only so much room up there, right? And eventually, the room is going to get to the point where we're going to have to kind of worry about how many satellites are up there, right? And so you guys already got a good amount of satellites up there, but let's go into first things first. These revenues that I'm seeing here, this CAGR, I, I definitely like this revenue here. We're looking at 51%. How is Planet able to accomplish this and keep the low cost, especially you know when we're talking about something here, high margin, and when you guys can bring in customers that are low cost, how, how are you guys able to accomplish that? Yeah, so um, I'm going to answer your question and, and give you a, a couple other data points too. Um, look, you know, uh, Mix, you've you've seen the rest. Now let's talk about the best, right? Which is Planet. You know, let's we're go. not the first, not the first IPO, but let's put this in perspective here. You know, we're well over a hundred million dollars of revenue if you look at our our forecast page, charging onwards at a very modest CAGR, 
compared to some of the forecasts you've seen in this space, okay? So it is incredible, literally not credible in my mind that people that have zero revenue are gonna catch up, let alone you know overtake our revenue forecast in the next three to five years. We, we have presented private equity style financials, not venture financials, okay? And they have us compounding, as you've seen, really quite modestly from the sort of 100, $130 million revenue you know, base that we, we are at this year for the next three to five years and breaking even uh, in, a, in about a couple of years after the close. So January 2025, you know, January year end is the company's year end. So calendar 24 is when we break even. And it doesn't take a lot of revenue for us to do that. We could break even now if we wanted. The reason we're so profitable, Mitch, is that vertical integration I mentioned a few minutes ago. So Will Marshall and Robbie Shingler, who founded this company, were inspired by, as Tim Draper tweeted a couple of days ago, we announced, we're inspired by the iPhone. How do we learn from consumer electronics? We don't need to build $800 million satellites like Maxar does. We can build one, two, $3 million satellites, launch cost, right? So for $400 million, we built the company for 10 years. We've gotten to over 100 of revenue. We've done 400 launches, have 200 satellites up, right? And all we're doing now is upgrading them and running this agile aerospace model, exactly the same development cycles as a phone, right? So we brought the cost down of everything. Will and Robbie invented their own new components, which by the way, are often more powerful than anything else out there in space, but they're orders of magnitude cheaper. By building their own components, no one else is making a profit off this, right? They're not outsourcing anything. It's all done in-house. People even hit us up sometimes for components, which we don't offer. We don't sell things to anybody else other than us. It's totally proprietary. It's the full stack, just like Apple makes their own chips. They make their own housing, right? They integrate and assemble. And now they've got this data business at Apple, which is so large, as Tim Cook always says, it could be a Fortune 100 company on its own, right? Just the data business, you know, music and all the rest of it. Just that is like a $40 billion revenue stream or something amazing like that, uh, you know, at Apple because they own their own hardware. So we have the control, we have the vertical integration, their R&D lab sits next to the manufacturing lab in the same area, same floor. It enables Planet to round trip innovation faster than anybody else in the world by orders of magnitude. They can go from the drawing room, if you will, you know, a piece of paper, to a launched piece of innovation in under six months. No one else can do this, right? So we can innovate faster. It means our data will always be proprietary. It means we will always have pricing power, right? The definition for DMY of an all-weather company is do you have pricing power, right? INQ, world's first quantum computing company, definitely has pricing power. Genius, you have to use their data, pricing power. Planet, it's like the best of INQ and Genius combined, right? You've got cutting edge proprietary data, cutting edge engineering and a vertical stack of data which they can effectively provide to anybody from a consumer to a government and nobody will ever have this data and we're always gonna be innovating faster than anybody else. So in conclusion, what does that mean, Mitch? Our lead is going to accelerate over any other satellite business you can shake a stick at. We're gonna innovate faster. We're now a becoming a public company. We're getting additional capital, additional visibility, additional customers are already banging on the door. I got to tell you that we're only right now, you know, converting inbounds because the sales team is tiny. This capital is mostly to power the growth and the go-to-market function. So we can actually start adding some outbound, right? That's how fast this company is growing with the demand it's got is we're just processing inbounds right now. It's really, it's really amazing to be honest, see a company that's gotten this far on so little capital that really this money we're raising is for go-to-market. We don't need, we don't need to invent new Sally technology. We don't need to build a fleet. We've already done that. This is about the software piece of the business for the next, you know, 10 years. Excellent. I, I, you said it well, uh, a complete ecosystem there. And now one thing I would like to focus on is, of course, in 2023, we're going to have that NRO contract to be up. And I think that's really one of the biggest things to keep an eye out on is how um, they've, they've mentioned it themselves, how they're trying to get away from the enhanced view of right. Max R. So how, how do you feel Planet is really going to step in here? And really, I mean, it, it looks like there, there's definitely a, a turn away from Max R and to going into other companies. So definitely an opportunity here for Planet. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be any other business, to be honest, other than Planet in the, uh, as I call it, extraterrestrial observation segment, right? <laughs> we can zoom to 35, you know, we can zoom down, right? The 50 centimeters, 35 centimeters is coming next year. 
right? So no one beats us on Zooming. We have more satellites for retasking, for video, for revisiting if you Zoom, but we've got the whole Earth scan that no one's, no one's, you know, even seven years away from having, right? So to do the whole Earth scan, you've got to have hundreds of satellites with our capabilities, right? So when I stand back at that and you look at the pie graph and the pipe deck you had pulled up, only about half our revenue is, is governmental related and that's local government and national and countries, right? It's, so we, we, we are a half or more commercial business and you can see the evolution in our financial section um, that our CEO, Ashley Johnson goes through all the time. You can see the evolution of the, of the revenue by category. And you can see that we will be a majority commercial business over the long term. So whilst you know NRO is important, and we will we will take I think way more than our fair share given our capabilities of any governmental contract that is coming up or coming out, you're going to see tremendous growth from us in the commercial segment because everybody needs the E in ESG. Everybody needs to know what's going on at their business in their country with their logistics with commodity prices, right? And the financial services market already is going crazy for what we offer, and they're going to go only crazier. Right. If you think about what we're providing here, like almost not almost literally every trader in the world, every investment fund at some point is going to be a customer here because they're going to need to know what's going on in the thing behind the thing and the news behind the news. I mean, Planet is the news behind the news, gentlemen, that picture of the block tanker, those missile silos, you know, right. The fires what's going on, like we are the news behind the news. And uh, I think we can trademark that one for Planet probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love all these references to the thing behind the thing. Now we got the news behind the news. I mean, this company, so exciting, Niccolo. Uh, if you've got a couple more minutes, we've got some questions from the chat. Uh, first off, Niccolo, the chat loves you. you. You know, people wanted us to bring you back on the show once this deal was announced. Um, so up first, we have some questions on some uh, potential partnerships. So someone mentioning, you know, Trimble, uh, Ridium, GPS companies, any any partnerships that Planet has in the GPS space that we can talk about? I'm um, so I, obviously not a liberty to disclose things that are being worked on. Um, it's it, my understanding is uh, it's not a big revenue driver to date, but that doesn't mean you know I maintain that almost every company in the world is going to be a customer at some point, right? So I think everyone's going to be a customer. The question is going to be at one level, at what level? Um, you know, the interesting thing is that we actually see ourselves evolving to become a verb, right? So just like Google, Googling is a thing. I think planet and planeting is going to become a thing is my estimation over time because it's going to become an app, a consumer app someday. Every business will subscribe to it. Everyone will know what's going on, right? Um, as Will always likes to remind me, planet is, you know, such an important company because it's not just the company planet, but like it literally is our planet Earth. Um, and we care about it deeply. The company itself is actually a public benefit corporation. Not everyone's picked that up, but it is a long-term mission-centric business that cares about the E and ESG. We are vital infrastructure, not just for the U.S. government, but in vital infrastructure for every government that cares about the E as well as what's going on in their, in their country. So I expect partnerships to be coming thick and fast you know, in the coming months and quarters as you know, this is kind of the, the coming out party. For Planet, ultimately, you know, not everyone's heard of us before this IPO, but I think everyone's, you know, going to have heard of us. Uh, I'm sure by the end of end of today, once uh, you guys get this, uh, you know, distributed in live, right? You guys are you guys are the best, by the way. I I well, always enjoy you. always enjoy coming on here. I always enjoy the questions, by the way. So keep them coming. I got as much time as you want. Awesome. We we have another question from uh, Mahi in the chat, and, and I'm not sure if you can talk about this one either. Uh, you know, Planet's already launched satellites. We've got plans, you know, for more satellites. Any comments on which launch partner is used to get Planet's satellites, uh, you know, up into orbit? So I think if you look at social media uh, and you follow the rumor mill in Silicon Valley, I think I think it's probably an open secret that Will Marshall uh, is very friendly. Uh, with you know, senior people in Silicon Valley, and it includes founders of uh, you know the SpaceXs of the world, as well as obviously the Googles of the world, right? I mean, Google's a big partner of ours, investor in the pipe, big customer. Um, I think Elon uh, and, and Will are, are pretty friendly as well. Um, and so, uh, safe to say that Planet is very diversified. So that's the that's the most important thing I'll make on this show is that they have launched with half a dozen or more different rocket companies. Um, but I think that Elon picks up a a good chunk of of the market share, and I suspect that Will and Elon will 
we'll keep working together. Um, really important to point out that you know we we believe that all of the margin in the whole. I'll say this as a DNY prediction: in the next decade, I think all of the margin in space is going to come from planet and data. I don't think the margins in the satellite uh, in, in the hardware manufacturing business of satellites. I don't think it's in the rocketry business. I don't think it's in the tourism business either. I think if you look at great businesses over time that have been built, whether it's Bloomberg or Genius or Google, the value is always in the data, right? So like Planet, just like you've seen us do before, every one of our SPACs, gentlemen, as you know, is a business Warren Buffett be proud of. You can buy it and hold it and come back three, five, seven, 10, 20 years later. It's only going to be bigger and better. Awesome. You know, again, the chat wants to talk about, you know, deals and partnerships. And I know you can't get into all those specifics, but we had an interesting comment from AJ here, you know, with uh, DMYI, uh, the IonQ deal and now DMYQ. Uh, any potential for these two companies, you know, to work together is the question from AJ. Yeah, no, look, I mean, I, I will point out a couple things. You know, I'm a physicist and went to Cambridge University. My friend Will Marshall is a physicist and went to Oxford, uh, and his doctorate is in is in quantum computing. So I think it's safe to say um, that uh, if if there ever can be a conversation between Peter Chapman, the CEO of INQ, and and Will Marshall, that it either has or will happen. Um, but the reality here is, I I think look, I think quantum cryptography, not just quantum computing, are both going to be relevant to Planet's future. Right? Planet has you know unparalleled opportunities. Uh, in the quantum cryptography capability long term, if they if they so choose, because they can distribute quantum cryptographic keys through their satellites if they wanted to. But you know, in in the quantum computing space, I think there's no doubt that multivariate machine learning, which is something that Planet cares about with its imagery and its data, and something that INQ you know will be good at someday, hopefully someday soon, you know, are are in marriage that should happen. So yeah, no, look, we. We, we promote synergies between DMY partners, as you'd expect. Uh, no doubt about it. It's a good question. Thank you for that. Awesome. And then uh, another question from the chat here, you know, moving beyond the, the SPAC deals that you've announced, you do have some new SPACs coming to market. Can you just give us, you know, what what's next for Niccolo and DMY technology in the SPAC world? You know, are, are we go just going to keep getting, you know, SPACs as long as there's good companies out there to invest in? Yeah, I mean, look, my partner Harry and I have been very focused, as you've all seen and heard, on being, as, as I like to put it, long-term greedy. So, so we're very focused on being sustainable, keeping the SPACs we raise small, you know, hanging out in the enterprise value size that you've seen us do for the first four. And for the next four, you know, I very much anticipate, you know, similar types of companies uh, thematically, not in the same categories, thematically, all weather businesses who are price givers. Um, you can expect us to, you know, hang out in the same enterprise value size, similar size pipes. I mean, our pipes are always sort of 200 to 300 million typically, and the SPACs are usually, you know, 250 to 350. So we're usually delivering, you know, four to 600 million dollars of total capital in kind of the 1.5 to 2.5 billion dollar pre-money, right? Um, and so we we like that. We add a lot of value uh, between Harry and I. Um, I think you're going to see us continue looking for great long-term businesses with high barriers to entry, great teams, unique technology, you know, strong moats. These are just really important if you want to be that Warren Buffett-like investor long-term, right? Um, and so our pledge to all of you is these are all going to be great businesses. You can close your eyes and come back three, five, seven, 10, 20 years later, and you're going to be proud. There's going to be, you know, hopefully $50 stocks and, and beyond. Um, and we're going to keep looking at everything from, I think, you know, gaming companies through to enterprise software and, you know, cutting edge engineering businesses. Uh, and we like always bringing the first in the category. You know, Planet is the first whole earth scan business. Um, and that ultimately will give them an enduring advantage given their revenue heft, how conservative the forecasts have been. Okay. If you look at us, we're all anybody else in the space. And frankly, how powerful this vertically integrated moat is. You guys should come tour actually the, uh, the lab in San Francisco. Yes, standing, yes. Standing offer, right? I'm yes. sure Will would be happy let's, to help Let's you make guys. it happen. Let's make it happen. It, it's really impressive. It was one of the things that, you know, I fell in love with the first time I saw it was like, wow, nobody else has this. Imagine the speed of innovation. Imagine the long-term cloud-like margin advantage. Imagine what that coupled with the one-to-many business model does. 
on the 25 terabytes of data they capture every day. No one can catch up with that ever, ever. Nicolo, it looks like some people in the chat want to come to her as well. So we <laughs> might have to plan a SPACs attack vacation. Um, okay. One more question for you. You know, we, we started the show talking about Virgin Galactic, of course, with that space flight, Sir Richard Branson. You know, we have you on. We're talking about space. Will we see Niccolo DeMasi uh, as a space tourist in the future? Is that something that interests you at all? <laughs> I know Mitch and I talk about it all the time. Uh, Look, um, I thought you were going to ask me about when Virgin's going to have revenue. I mean, that's, you know, that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's a whole different. That's, that's, that's a whole, harder question. When's that's Virgin going to have revenue? When's we Virgin going to have? We gave you the easy question. Yeah, when's the Virgin going to have profits? I mean, ask the same question about anyone in space other than planet. When are you going to have revenue? When are you going to have EBITDA? Okay, I'm going to have a reliable business model, right? Let's just keep this in perspective here, right? Like, planets, you know, should be a much bigger market cap than someone like Virgin. If you think about the revenue, the growth, the profitability right on the horizon, right? In terms of tourism, look, we are bringing down accessibility to planet data way faster than Virgin's bringing down accessibility to space, right? I will be a tourist absolutely when it becomes a little more accessible. I mean, look, you can get planet data in the five figures. You don't need six, seven figure, eight figure, you know, raffles for to be in space these days. I, I think that's, you know, right now, that's the preserve of the billionaires and the Cento millionaires. Right. I'd, I'd like to see these things get democratized. Planet's about democratization. That's why we're going to be the winner in the space. You need everybody to access this. You build a consumer brand that way. You you build long term revenue at all cohort sizes. Right. So, yeah, mark my words. I think Will Marshall and I will both be tourists when it's accessible. But, you know, they got a long way to go to, to, to bring that down. OK. And get the capacity up and make this something everyone can access like they're flying, you know, from New York to L.A. kind of thing when it's that price all of us on this show are going to be up there. Right. And I think that's going to happen in our lifetimes, but not this year <laughs> or not, not next year. And that's why planet's so different. This is accessible today. This will be accessible to you, you know, next year, not next decade. Perfect. And then, you know, on that subject, we hear all the time about, you know, SPAC Kings, who is the SPAC King? We have a comment here in the chat from Carl saying, love how he thinks Niccolo is the godfather of the best SPACs. So we'll leave the conversation at that. The godfather of SPACs, Niccolo Damasi, joining us on SPACs Attack again. Uh, DMYQ, bringing public, uh, or bringing uh, Planet public via SPAC deal. Niccolo, thank you so much again for, for taking time out of your busy schedule joining us. And of course, we look forward to having you back on the show and getting out to San Francisco for that tour to happen. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you for the questions. I look forward to returning. I've always got time for you guys. You're awesome. Have a great day. Awesome. Always. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nice you, you guys. Yeah. Uh, exciting company, Mitch. I exclusive. mean, there, there's so much there. And revenue, profitability, like this is great. You know, we talk space stocks all the time. Here's another one that should be on your list uh, of space stocks. Uh, you know, that can impact the whole sector. I mean, what what did you think, Mitch? So much to take away from that. I know we got limited time, but. I mean, you're talking to a person that is all about these stocks, right? I've been all about these stocks before Planet, right? Before Planet was public. So one of the things is that, that that's what I tell you guys off the start. There's a reason why I was watching Max R way back in, in kind of two or three years ago. And then now moving into looking at Black Sky and now moving into looking at Planet. So this, this is, there's a reason why this is there. And I believe, like Niccolo said co completely, it's all about the data, data, data. And the first things first, you need to have some hardware up there so you can have that data. Looks like Planet is definitely leading in that area. You know Maxar is up there. Black Sky trying to get up there. There's a reason why. There's a battle for that data. It's not the battle for the satellites up there. It's really the battle for the data. Who's going to be able to get the, the best kind of data set so that they can go ahead and say that they are that, that best leader, right? Yeah, and I love the fact they already have 200 satellites. They're ahead of the competition. You know, they're diversified across sectors. I mean, that picture of the Ever Given was so, so clear. You could see that container ship and everything on it. I mean, this is a great company. And Mitch, anytime someone comes on and tells us they're the thing behind the thing, I mean, 
that just makes me want to invest in it, <laughs> right? Because that's what we want, right? The companies that are the thing behind the thing, data, data, data. And, and Mitch, you're right. You have been on top of satellites for a while. The, this is a great satellite company. So in that same lines and that thought process, I, I think this is the one the, the one that you should own. So uh, my, my hat's off to Niccolo and uh, Planet here. I, I love this one. So uh, All right. Well, 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 we're going to go a little bit over time here. So Power Hour could wait a little bit. It's it's not a worry. I'm sure Luke won't be mad if he's hearing me out there. So let's go ahead. We'll go a little bit over time here. Let's, let's go into 12.04 here. We normally cut off at 12.02 no matter what, but we'll go a couple minutes extra here. Um, is there anything else you want to bring up? Uh, Chris, but first things first, what I want to point out really was the number one takeaway from there. And if you want to get a number one takeaway is, uh, you know, I've done my research in all these, right? And so what really can separate them, right? And so one thing that he did state that does separate is the building and manufacturing in-house that, that makes a huge huge, huge difference in the margins, guys. Uh, a lot of these companies are going to, let's say, Maxar to go ahead and build out their satellites. Then they're going to go ahead and then use that to go ahead and go up. But what does this do? This definitely affects the margins of the business. That's why I think that's why he, he brought it up multiple times that, hey, look, look at where these guys are building and look where we're building and look how that really holds everything in-house, which also controls the data in-house, which gives them a proprietary advantage, I think, in the long run and a competitive advantage over, let's say, the, the other two competitors major, you could say maybe Maxar and Black Sky. Yeah, you know, you're right. Vertical integration. And, you know, he compared it to, you know, an Apple, a Tesla, right, where they, they want to own the software and the hardware. That That's huge, right? Um, so spot on, Mitch. I, I love that as the key takeaway. I, I really like the total addressable market size, right? We talk all the time when these SPAC deals get announced, you know, what is the, the TAM, right? And even at traditional IPOs, they list their TAM. Here you have a TAM in the trillions of dollars and, and two multi-trillion dollar industries. But then Niccolo broke it down by segments and, and you have multiple, multiple, multiple $10 billion segments and, and they can hit several of those. And, and even if they hit several of those, that, that's huge. And if they can hit all of them, you've got trillions of dollars of potential. I mean, this thing is just massive, the opportunity that they have. So I, I, I'm impressed. I mean, always should know, right? When we have Niccolo on, he, he can sell me on any deal that he has announced. I think the chat would agree as well. Um, yeah, so another great interview here from, from our pal, Niccolo Damasi. Like always, definitely giving the great answers, giving information, insight. And then also, I mean, hey. Chris, dude, you, I'm telling you, it's a rich boy tool. It's a rich boy toy. <laughs> Even my man Nicola was like, I ain't putting out that money. I know, I know. That's Even the my thing man is... Nicola was like, yo, I have I might have the money, but there's another thing if I'm gonna put it out there like that. Uh, you know what the I worst think, part of that we'll is, man, on it. Is, is that I think that Blue Origin is actually going to charge more. Than Virgin More. Galactic. <laughs> well, the price isn't coming down. I think oh, it's going up, but you're going to see a couple years uh, of the rich flying to space, right? And then I once can't. those once those customers are gone, then the price comes down. But it's kind of supply and demand, right? I mean, that's the that's the flip side of this. If you're Virgin Galactic and people will pay you two hundred fifty thousand, do you, do you charge less or do you take the money? My thing is, is it is it a benefit to society? No. Thank you, thank you. That's that. This is my thing. Like, and and this is where it comes into. It's almost like you're telling me, "Hey, we got cool toys, but you can't do you it. You can't use a window rich. shop. You can window <laughs> shop though. Yeah. You can watch me. You can watch yeah. me do it." No, and that's a key to Planet here. I mean, Mitch, the fact that they they want not just you know big companies to use their data; they want they, investors to use their data. They want you to be able to pull your phone yeah. and be like, "Yo, you know what? I, I need to see how the beach looks right now." They want us to be able to integrate it into Benzinga <laughs> Pro. How about that? A Benzinga Pro upgrade where you can see satellites of you know oil shipments, container ships, and you can get insights into commodities and more. So. 
you know, that's one of those things, right? It, as he said, it could even give investors a, a potential advantage. So a uh, very interesting. And, you know, I love that talk about space with Niccolo because the guy is just so smart, um, you know, but I, I think that's going to do it for us, Mitch. That's um, going to you know. do it. That's up. It'll be a wrap, guys. We'll definitely stick around for Power Hour coming up next. They'll be having at 1230 Matt Bailey from CEO of Game On. Game On. So definitely check that out. Definitely it, coming up right next, guys. So you don't got to go anywhere. Just hit the thumbnail and get into 